it just me, or does that look like the... Uh, what is it called? Court of Owls. The Talon. From DC. Batman. Does that look like his mask? Somehow? Kinda? What's going on here? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Spider-Man Homecoming Legends Spider-Man, or as I like to say, the Web Wing Spider-Man. I think that's what everybody calls them. And I just found this at Walmart. In fact, they got two cases and still no Moon Knots, but they did have this. So, I was happy to find this. I collect the movie figures. And I've been doing a lot of Star Wars this week, so I thought I would change it up a little bit. You can't eat your favorite food every day. You get sick of it. Now looking at the package, it's the same as all the other Marvel Legends. I start out every video like this, and you know, it, it's getting kind of boring, I guess you could say. But, what else can I say about packaging? It, it's cardboard, it's plastic, it's a window, there's some logos. On the side, we get a pretty picture of movie Spider-Man. On the back, promotional picture of Spider-Man, bio up here in the top. The little wanted posters across here. Now I am doing a review of the Vulture Wings too because with this figure I finish off the wings. I didn't buy all the figures but VB we collaborate on some of these waves. He gets the comic figures, I get the movie figures. And I ended up with the wings because it goes to a movie top figure. So it all worked out. Then down here some warnings, some unreadables, probably says something like warning does not actually possess the proportionate strength of a spider. On the other side, pretty picture, top spider logo, bottom, more legalese. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this open and see what's going on here. Before I get into anything, I, I've got to do some fixing here. The lower elbow joint is frozen. It will not turn right there. And two, for some reason, they put a big ass step right here. And it's also on the front, but you can't see it because I can't make the arm go straight. It's just running into the bicep, or well, the back of the bicep, the upper arm right there. On this side, if you bend it, you can see it has that same step, but it goes up into the arm. I'm going to try to pop this joint, pop this joint, try to get that freed up, try to get this tightened up and working right. And then down here on the knee, this peg right here isn't seated all the way. You can see it gapping right there. It kind of causes this some flimsiness. This side's nice and tight. Both sides are pegged on. Have to heat this up, squeeze it together, try to get that peg through. If I fix this, we'll continue on with the review. Uh, if that doesn't fix, this is going to be one big bitch fest, I have a feeling. As I turned around to go fix it, I noticed too that the biceps up onto the shoulders, this side, no gap, rotates. On this side, you can see it's gappy. You can see the pin down in there. Uh, you can see lots of space. When you try to move it, there's actually some wiggle on the shoulder. So I'll also pop that off and see what I can do there too. Oh man, that is a thin joint right there. I figured out what the steps are. It's not to make stops in the elbow. It's because they go super thin right there at the top. It's just barely enough plastic to come up over the pin. I still haven't freed up this. It acts like it's stuck with paint but I'm going to get that back together before I tear something up. I pushed the pin all the way through, and it came out this side. That's not good. And I'm letting the bicep cool with the elbow piece up in there. Hopefully that'll leave it some gap to go in and out without me having to heat it up or get around it. But for the bottom piece right here, I'm going to have to heat it up and pop it off completely because I can't seem to free it up. Yeah, it acted really stuck down in the bottom. And there is a detent right there. Oh, man, I cut the hell out of my thumb. Sweet. Okay, pop back together. I can get the elbow up. The top's still kind of loose, but it does slide up into the bicep now. So we're good. I'm going to heat this up just a little bit, try to squeeze that back together. Easy enough. And what I'm doing there is I'm putting the back side of the pliers on the peg and then not on this side. So when I push... It's pressing the pin forward. And also these pliers I'm using, they don't have teeth in them, so they don't mar up the plastic whenever I push through. After the fixes, I, I like it a lot better than I initially did. I got it out of the package, the elbow pissed me off, the bicep was funky, the knee was kind of sticky-outy, and then on top of all that I thought, I already have this Spider-Man just in different colors, but 
that's not the case. And to get it out of the way, here's Hasbro's first attempt at this costume back when it was in Civil War. It came in a three-pack with Captain America and Iron Man. You can see that they're very, very similar. At first glance, the big difference is the colors. The first Spider-Man, the blue was a lot darker. The red was a little bit brighter, almost, but maybe that's the contrast against the darker blue. But for the most part, they do look the same, but once you start looking really, really close, there are different parts. The biggie is the biceps, and it's not just new biceps because of the web wings on this one. It's a completely different sculpt. You can see on the old one, it has some kind of double seam on the front of the bicep. It's a lot heavier sculpt-wise on the black details that run up. You know, the pieces that go, hey, that's not on the classic Spider-Man. That's just on the movie Spider-Man. And then the webs on the torso, a little bit different. Also on the crotch, getting down, webs there, different angles. It's almost the same. I mean, if you were just glancing across, you'd think, oh, same, but they're not. Also on the new Spider-Man, there's a texture all over it. Reds, blues, everything. So that's another big difference. Turn around to the back, and here's the huge giveaway, is the big spider emblem on his back. On the new one, you can see the extra added detail to it. The old one was just kind of there. And then, again, just slight different in the webbing and then all the way down the arms. Now I do think the hands are reused and the legs are really hard to tell. They may be the same, just attached to the same type of joint, but on the new one you do get some added texture. It's Again, it's that little micro mesh kind of look to it. The boots look like exactly the same sculpt, but again, texture. The heads are completely different too. This Spider-Man, spoiler alert, comes with the wide eyes and he comes with the squinting eyes. This one kind of comes in between, which is cool. You can still use this Spider-Man as, you know, an in-between Spider-Man. But you'll also notice the webs on the head aren't nearly as deep on the new one as it is the old one. These were just sculpted way in there. These, not so much. But speaking of the sculpt, it's really nice. In fact, I like it better than the first one. I feel the webs being so deep on the first one is a negative, so them making them more shallow on this one is positive in my book. I dig it a lot more. And then all over the body, they added that texture, which just ramps this figure up to 11. I mean, I love some texture, especially on costumes like this where there's a lot of flat spots. It just adds something to it. Then paint all over, I prefer the lighter blue of this costume. And then they went in and did some kind of tech detailing just with paint, especially on the legs. I'd almost call it like circuitry look running down. It's very subtle. You have to look at it close to get there, but yeah, I, it sticks out at you once you see it. And it adds a little something to it. It's also the same on the blue up on the torso. The wash on the webbing, I like it better than the straight up black that was on the first one. This is a little bit more subtle. It doesn't just flood the figure in detail. It, it adds to the overall piece. But I have a feeling that that's also what stuck the elbow on mine on the left side. And then up to the head, like I said, this is the wider eyed look. And I'm gonna say it, I love this. This looks like classic Spider-Man. After everything has cooled off, you can see that the bicep still is a little bit gappy, but not near as much as it was. So I'm happy about that. The elbow also continues to go up into the bicep. Still a little bit loose right here. The forearm has stayed freed up at the elbow, so that works too. The detent even still works. I'm happy with that. Going over articulation, there's a ball on a hinge in the neck going up into the head, so can look up really well. Buries his chin in his chest. A little bit of tilt, swivel. There's a butterfly joint in the torso, can come forward, gets a little bit more once you get the arm up. Also goes back. There's a hinge and swivel coming out of that, so you can hinge up to there. Swivel around. There's a swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes all the way up. Hinge and swivel at the wrist, hinge, swivel. There's a hinge in the torso, comes forward two clicks, almost 90, not bad at all. Back one click. Swivel in the waist, and I don't remember the other figure I had this on the other day, but it's almost like the old Masters of the Universe spring back action. It's not an actual action feature. It's something about how the pin is shaped going down into the plastic shape of the other part. So it gets tension whenever you turn it and then it pops back. It, as I do it, it loosens up a little bit, but yeah, that's tight. There's a ball joint coming out into the hip, can get forward, get back, out. Not so great. Why does Spider-Man always get stuck with the shitty out movement right there. I, I, is it because it's Spider-Man? You can manipulate that to come up and around to give them more of a crouch look, but because of the ball right there, that will pop off. Not a big deal. You just pop it back on. But yeah, 
if you get too crazy with it, that's going to happen. Got a swivel at the thigh, got a double knee, comes all the way up, hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward, and again, this being Spider-Man, I'd like to see more range right here coming forward, and then forward facing pin for Rocker. For accessories, Spider-Man comes with two fists, of course, this is standard, and then he comes with two thwip hands. And what I'm missing right here, while we're talking about hands, are wall crawling hands. Now my right hand, it kind of slides in and out a little bit too easy. The left has a nice pop to it, but the other hand just pops right in. Not a big deal. For other accessories, he comes with an extra head. It has more of a squinty look to it. We know from the movies that his senses are heightened, so I guess he had some kind of lenses that opened and closed, some kind of shutters, and then with the Stark Tech suit, it actually does it on its own. So, very cool feature there. It just pops off the ball, you pop the other head on there, and it goes on good. And then finally for his last accessory are his web wings. Now this was a big deal in the trailer for Homecoming. When I saw him use them I was like oh hell yeah he's got the web wings and it actually has flight to them. But getting to action figure form not that excited. Now he has these rectangle holes under his biceps right here and you just plug the wings in and they just kind of friction hold there. And I've noticed on the right one, it's not bad, it stays in there. On the left one though, I don't know if it's because of me heating it or me stretching it or something, but it doesn't like to stay in there. And once you have them in there, you have one pose. I mean, if you're gonna pose them flying on your shelf, then yeah, that's cool, but on the shelf like this, uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that, so I doubt I ever use these again. Now for comparison, here he is again with the first Hasbro movie Spider-Man. You can see there's a little bit of difference in height. It's almost like with the new torso, the new crotch, the new head, they kind of brought some height out of it. Almost a little bit too much, because here he is with the homemade suit Spider-Man from the same wave. It has a little height on the web wing Spider-Man, so eh. And then finally here he is with the Vulture again. There's quite a height difference here. In action poses, on the shelf, it's not that big a deal. But I don't, I don't think Michael Keaton is this much bigger than Tom Holland. And then finally, here's the last piece I need to finish Vulture's wings. And then for the pieces I already had, I already put those together. But we're going to put the rest of this together real quick. Which, it is kind of confusing. I went ahead and put these together because I didn't want to mix the parts up. I mean, you can see that there's a hollow on the back side of the wings. So it's pretty self-explanatory which way they go. I just I did not want to leave anything to chance. Pops on there and then the turbine part pops into here. And this is pretty damn impressive. What are we talking about here? We're talking about a 22 and a half foot foot. <laughs> That'd be a big ass set of wings. It's 22 and a half inches from wingtip to wingtip straight out. As much as I would rather have a figure for the wave, I'm since I'm a movie fan, I'm good with this. Because we wouldn't have got this in a single box unless it was some kind of deluxe piece. And the detail on it is fantastic. All kinds of techno detail, little rivets, little blades, just all kinds of little techies. Then the paint, there's a nice army top green over a gray that has kind of a metal flake to it. So it is a little bit metallic. And then on the other side, I guess the exhaust where it's burned on the metal, there's a purplish, there's a bluish. It's just really nice. I, I love that little added detail on the back. And then for articulation, you have hinges in the middle. The turbines or rotors or whatever come out. They rotate separately from the wing. These rotate inside of here. You have another hinge out here. And this rotates, but it has flat spots on it, so it feels like you're not supposed to rotate it. I don't know. I'm good with not rotating it up because it makes it look kind of broken. I, I can't remember who this came with. It may have come with Vulture himself, but there's a stand for the wing. You just slip it down in there, and it holds it up. And that's to hold all the... Ah! And that's to hold the weight of the wing while it's actually on the figure. It plugs into the back really nice and tight actually it's not going to fall out and then if he needs help supporting the wing up you have this stand piece that just kind of clips in there but there you go I mean I don't really need the stand and in my display he's going to be flying up on the wall so yeah he'll, he'll be hanging I won't need any of the support and plus it'll take up a lot less shelf real estate being up on the wall itself and as far as the Vulture goes, I already reviewed him in another review along with Beetle from The Wave. So you can go check that out if you want more information on Vulture himself. So at the end of the day, even with its problems, I'm, I'm good with this Spider-Man. It's definitely replacing the one from the 3-pack. 
And I am super happy to finish off Vulture's Wings. Again, I love the movies. I, I'm easy to please, really, seriously. That's what it comes down to. Plastic gets on my nerves every now and then, but when I'm watching movies, I just like to shut down, go to that place that I was when I was a kid, and just sit there in wonderment. And having plastic representations of that, dig it even more. I mean, I can come home recreate those battles and watch the movies again and it's a never-ending circle. Now I'm not gonna say the Spider-Man is perfect. You saw the problems with it. I don't know if everybody's is like that. It may have just been mine. But I fixed the problems. I'm good with the figure. It may be a little bit small. The accessories, at least the web wings, are kinda worthless to me. So that's a little bit of extra plastic that's going to be taking up room in my tackle box of accessories. But there's also a lot of good with this figure. The colors are nice, the sculpt is beautiful. The two heads, they both give a classic vibe, and I'm down with both of them. In fact, I'm going to have a problem deciding which one to display on the shelf. And then finally, to get Vulture on the shelf in all his winged glory. <laughs> I don't know where I came up with that. Whatever. That's awesome, too. He's going to take up a lot of the wall, but I have extra wall space. Shelf space is getting short supply. So yeah, consider me happy, which is not that much different from most of my reviews. I, I'm just a happy kind of guy, I guess. I'm a plastic fiend. I'm a hillbilly with an action figure fetish. It takes a lot for me to hate a figure. I mean, you've seen it before. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, yeah. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the whoosh.